say, um, I teach fifth grade. Oh, so you do more work and get paid less. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did this student, did she uh, mention my husband, Carl, by any chance? Um, it was a few weeks ago, but I think she did say how nice her wee professor was. Everyone seems to like my husband. Well, as long as you like. I do, most of the time. <laughs> it's better than for most people. Well, have you ever been married? Well, yeah. <laughs> but I've often imagined what it would be like if I found the right person, I mean. And what do you imagine it would be like? Oh, that I get to be myself, but I become even better. <laughs> I raise my kids and be happy. Well, that's a very nice dream. I hope you get to realize it someday. Yeah, me too. A little more off the shoulders, or is this it? Oh, no, no, it's it's perfect. I'm sure your husband will love it. Yeah, if he even notices. <laughs> uh, listen, someone donated so many of these to the school. I we don't need so many. Would you like Oh wow, great, nice, thanks. I've never actually tried to climb one before, but hey, it'll give me a good reason to go to the beach and meet some people, huh? Maybe a volleyball player or something? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Project, you studied the mating habits of the zebra finch. Lovely little songbirds, are they not? Yes, that's right. Though it is only the male that's it. And you separated the male and female birds after they had chosen their mates. Then you matched them in an enclosed aviary with other birds they had also already mated. So, first we observed them, we determined how they choose their partners. And I must say, it is really quite fascinating to think about individual behaviors that influence how the females, because the females are rather choosy. Sure, which male bird is exactly Good right. idea. Go, Astro Boy, go! Mm -hmm. And others with red, and so on. And then you study how the baby birds thrive, and then you artificially meld it family. Once you've torn them, as it were, from the bosom of the bird they love. You wouldn't put it in those anthropomorphic terms exactly, but it does seem that the birds kept from their first choice of mates be better as child members, particularly the males. They tend to stay together for life. Factor in the occasional strand from the nest of the species. Strand from the nest? Now that's even better. better. Interesting. Now for a break and a segment from the news. <laughs> Started. Too bad. I 
guess you won't get to use your metal detector today. That's okay. I'm happy to just wash the waves with you. You know, the uh, painter, William Turner, had himself tied to the mats of one of the sailing ships. Why? So he won't storm wildly underneath his ship, though I can think of other ways to burn calories. John, no. Here? Now in the car? Why not? People are leaving. You know, they say the moon and tide may be little funny things. But down, Astro Boy, down. If you take anything off, people will definitely leave. We'll get arrested. Oh, well, 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 Remember that time on the Isle of Erin? Sure, but there were only about three people living on that whole island. You can only see two or three cars halfway down the block. I said no, John. Fine. Oh, the woman near the water. He's trying to fly a kite. Oh, yeah? Is it working? No, oh, the wind's not cooperating. Every time she holds it up, it's flat on the ground. Here, let me see. Ah. Ah. Doesn't she know any better not to try to fly a kite in the rain? <laughs> you can get electrocuted. You're a thunder. It's just a stiff gray rain. She's the one who's getting <laughs> stiff. <laughs> right now, completely blue sky. Well, sky is certainly not blue, so it's not much danger of that. Let me go out there and get myself all wet so she's an idiot. Well, you could be a bit more diplomatic. <laughs> oh, she really is nuts. Uh, I think she's great. So determined. Oh, well, if I were doing that, would you think I was great? Yeah, sure. Great. And nuts. <laughs> she could get sick. Pneumonia or something. Like two showers? That's pretty healthy to me. Yeah, a little too healthy, which is why I think she staring at her like that.
help if she didn't keep running into her mom at Trader Joe's. <laughs> well, maybe your mom is right about one thing. What's that? That you've grown up since then. <laughs> All right. You all ready, sir? Kept the same style by meeting it up there. Oh, great. You know, I almost look normal again. <laughs> so this new girlfriend, you really like her, huh? Yeah. We've known each other for a couple of years now. We kind of became best friends first, and then we tried dating, but it got so intense so fast that we were afraid we'd wreck our friendship. Really? Yeah, it's a good thing our schools were an hour apart anyway, or I'm not sure how much studying we would have gotten done. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, I never got to finish myself. But not, not because I had a boyfriend. <laughs> it just costs too much. <laughs> so, uh, how did you end up back together? Oh, well, it's, it's kind of funny, actually. I mean, we hadn't seen each other in a while, and you know, it wasn't like we planned on anything to start happening again. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. And are you still best friends? Yeah, I, I think we are, so far. Wonderful. It's nice to hear a story with a happy ending now and then. Even if it's just the beginning, too. <laughs> so you really think it's going to make my mom happy? That you've got a haircut, or that you have a new girlfriend? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> but how could you do it? How could you just separate those birds like that? It's not really my study. I'm just providing data support. And when one of my graduate students is up for a grant, I put my weight behind it, that's all. But what about those poor birds? I think it's disgusting. I didn't think it was disgusting when your fifth graders made that sculpture in Eagle out of chewing gum. That wasn't chewing gum, it was paper mache. It was an elephant. Are you ready for bed? We're all alone, though. David said he was planning on being out late, and that new hairstyle of yours was a real turn. I didn't think you were paying attention. I pay attention to everything about you. Really? I thought you were tired from throwing your weight behind your pretty graduate student. Well, you're the only pretty zebra finch for me, and I can prove it to you. Right? No, this I'd like to see. Are you gonna fly around the backyard, maybe build us a nest out of twigs and toilet paper? But the downstairs neighbors would love that. No, I had other things in mind, actually. Good thing I have my tubes tied. Hey, maybe David would like a little brother or sister now that he's out of college. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> it wasn't my idea to have your tubes tied, you know. It was a way of ensuring a happier menopause in the long run. Oh, when I saw how my mother suffered, the endless hot flashes, the mood swings, that was terrible. You sure can set the mood. <laughs> Good, that was another reason. I knew you were about to go a bit crazy when David went off to school. Crazy? Me? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, and now that he's back home... Oh, but how could any bench resist such a cute little fellow? Well, you know what, though? <laughs> I don't think David is at a friend's house tonight. I think he's on a date. Really? He didn't say anything to me. Well, he didn't say anything to me either, but I think I just figured it out. For one thing, he just got his hair cut, too, this morning. And he spent an hour getting ready before he went out. Really? I, uh, I didn't notice that either. And you know, those letters that he sent home from that school trip to Europe were unusually sweet. That was a while ago, and I, I didn't notice that either. Well, did you read them? I glanced at him. I thought that he was just missing home. And then I know he kept asking for more money. Well, he did that too, but you know, sometimes women notice things men don't. Oh, because women are more intuitive than all that. Just like the female zebra. Right, we have deep primal instincts that allow us to survive in a male-dominated world. Hey, men can have instincts too, you know. Well, sure, to propagate the species and to eat. I knew that time before you did that you wanted to change schools. I had been complaining about that principle for months. Were you? I had to know it. But I could tell you were so unhappy. How do you know it wasn't you making me unhappy? Never crossed my mind. I don't think much has ever crossed your mind when it came to David. Well, he was always closer to you anyway. Girl, you think she looks like you? Ugh, I have no idea. I doubt it. Thanks a lot, just the same. Okay, don't mention it. <laughs> but is it serious then? What, my being unhappy with you? No. It's between David and this girl. Well, 
What does being serious even mean these days, darling? You know what it means. What, if we're sleeping together? You're sucking me once or twice. Uh, and you're sucking on, my first, on our first date, you don't remember. Of course I remember. But I've known you a long time. We don't know how well David knows this girl. All the more reason he might need my advice. No, since when have you ever given him advice? See, I tried to lead by example. Anyway, you know I had to travel a lot when he was little, put the down payment on this apartment, but it doesn't mean I don't care. Have you ever told him this yourself? Not in so many words, but he knows it. I just wish he would tell me things. Yeah, since he learned how to communicate by example from his father. Well, maybe you weren't always criticizing him. I'm not! Except for that time when he was five, he tried to rewire the toaster. But come to think, but the toast did taste better. I just don't want to make the same mistakes I did. Like sleeping with a girl on the first date? Maybe. Yeah, or, or other things. You regret it, don't you? What did I suck with you? You sucked a lot uh, in the past 20 years, you know. <laughs> Has it been that bad? No, mm, no, not really that bad. Oh, thanks. Not ever? <laughs> Mostly not ever. We've had our moments, but all couples do. But are you still glad you married me? Why wouldn't I be? Was it your first choice? Oh, first loves are just a rite of passage we go through until we find the one we're really meant to be. In the end, they don't mean anything at all. Oh, no? No, we don't pick the ideal person. We pick the one we can make it work best with. Oh, have we just been making the best of it? Is that all this has been? No, I just mean there's bound to be bumps in a room. And some are minor, and some are major. And in the process, we might end up losing parts of ourselves. But it's good to have someone by your side. To save off loneliness and avoid the potholes? Not just that, but to stand up against things with someone else. But is that, is that love? What else could it be? In real life, and I'm not sure if that's the same as true love. We love someone not because they're perfect, but because they're not. And we know we're not perfect either. And their imperfections balance against ours. Sort of like notches to the key of a lock. Or asymmetrical pieces to a puzzle. We fit in the end. So you don't think we were meant to be together if we just fit together in the end? It was not exactly what I had in mind. So you're saying you're unhappy just because I'm telling you the truth? Well, it's your truth. It's not mine. But if we're talking about our lives together, doesn't it have to be one truth? Well, that may be if men and women were exactly the same, or loved always for the same reasons. So it's not the same. Then you, you agree with me. It's not perfect. No, what I'm saying is that it could be perfect if you would only recognize that what we have is rather wonderful. You're talking about what's left after all the battles we've had to fight. I'm talking about what was there in the beginning and was still there and you would just let it be there. I don't know what you mean. I think you do. You were my first choice. For me, it was love at first sight. You were the one who had to realize that I was better than, you know. Yes, there is. Every time we argue, you bring that up. Maybe you should need to be reminded. Oh. Do you think we should call him? When, he, when he's on his date? If you really think he's going to get himself in trouble. If you mean falling in love, and suddenly finding it's 20 years later, and he's still with that same person he went out with at one time, not knowing her, and now she's the whole world to him, and he to her, as if they were always meant to be together. Is that what you mean by trouble? It's not the way you were describing it before. She could be wrong for him. Well, then he'll have to figure that out for himself, or get a divorce like so many do. Why don't we go to bed? Is that a proposition? Isn't it always? I thought you just like to sleep.
next to you. Where you belong. Of course, where I belong. But sex first is okay too. <laughs> Busy. <laughs> I'm going to 
Brian? I mean, uh, isn't that what you wrote me up to your order for? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'll also to see my room. You kept asking about it. Unless you don't want me here. No, you know what I do. All right, I'll stay for a little while. One condition. What's that? You let me borrow this toy submarine. I want to try it next time I take a bath. Deal. <laughs> Can I take a bath with you? Mm, I don't think so. I want to be able to focus on my toy. I mean, this is how he's having a way of I'm interested in this, but I prefer clean humor myself. You know, for a geek, you have a terrible sense of what's funny. Hey, that hurts. Good, you deserved it. But, tell me something. Do you still think I'm cute? Nope. No. Now I think you're beautiful. I, I mean, I have no idea what everybody else has to say about it, but, uh, you are. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Should have fixed those eye effects sooner. Alice was out kind of late last night. Of course, I didn't hear her come in. You were drawing in the attic again. Doesn't it bother you? No, I mean. She's used to being away now. We need to give her some more space. Like you give me? Well, yeah, is that so bad? You're the one who wanted to go back to your career selling houses. If you've changed your mind, you should have told me. I haven't. Instead of waiting till we already settled in back in Chicago. Settled? We haven't even picked out the wallpaper in the dining room yet. Fickle, fickle, fickle. It's not like you don't change your mind. You are consistently unpredictable. Well, that's a good thing. At least I'm consistent. Like a porous rock. Stubborn? That's for sure. But determined. Like that woman flying her kite? Yeah, I suppose, in a way. What the hell is that supposed to mean? About things that you want. Oh, not about things you want. Sometimes. Sometimes. No. I thought you liked the idea of having a townhouse by the lake. I did. I do. But sometimes I think you're the one who's bored already. Oh, with the lake? Me. Don't you seem bored this morning? We're snoring. Oh, you mean after? Yes, after. Well, at least I wasn't snoring during. In any case, that doesn't mean that I don't. Yes, but was it love? Oh my God, wasn't it? I don't think you feel loved. Sometimes, but lately I just think maybe you're not thinking about me when we. Who oh, else would I be thinking of? Look, just sit here and enjoy the scenery. Oh, look at those clouds. I wish I'd brought my sketch pad. John, John, <laughs> why do you why do you always have to make something out of everything? Why, when you look at that sky, why do you always have to think that color or that cloud reminds you of something when you don't even know what it is? Why do you do that? I don't do that. Yes, yes, you do. Why can't you, when you look at that sailboat, say, that's a sailboat, and then forget all about it? Why do you have to worry about how to make the people riding on the boat into a story or wish you had your paint so you could paint, so you could make something beautiful? Yeah, I do wish I had my paints. You know, how about a robot to be taught to roll boat? Because, you know, it is already beautiful. Or ugly. Just imagine if Vikings had robots like that. What difference does it make? You could put their antenna in their spiked helmets. Why do you have to always make something out of everything? Are you still talking about the sky? You know what I wish? I wish I was on that sailboat. Someone else. Oh, now who's thinking of someone else? Is the guy handsome? What guy? The guy in the sailboat! I can't see. It's too far away. No, but what in your story? That's not the point. What is the point? You just want to sail away with someone, you don't know what they look like. How do you know it will turn out any better than being with me? Hmm. Doesn't matter. Sometimes I just have this incredible urge to get as far away from you as possible. Is that really what you want? Sarah, tell me about it. What is it you want me to do? Who is it exactly do you want me to be? <clears throat> well, the cool thing about robots is that they're more easily adaptable than people to different situations. Shut up, John. There's no operating system or app for making a person feel loved. No. No, I suppose not. Not if they don't want to be. Just leave me alone for a while, will you? Fine. Where are you going? Sarah! He loves me. He loves me.
blows me not. Maybe I need John's metal detector to see if he even has a mechanical heart in there, the bastard. I'm, I'm sorry, are you, are you talking to me? No. Don't you think it's rude to interrupt a private conversation? Private? You could be talking on the phone to someone. Or are you? Yes. No. Look. Sarah? Carl? Carl? I, I don't believe it. It's been, what, over 20 years? Uh, yes. Uh, do you live in Chicago now? I'm surprised they haven't uh, run into you uh, before. I just moved out here by the water this winter. And it was John's idea. John? My husband. Uh, sorry we didn't invite you and Marla to the wedding. So, how is she? She's fine. You could talk to her sometime. Maybe call her up. You were best friends. Yeah, since the third grade, but a lot has happened since then. I bet we both have other things to do. So you didn't go to the ten-year class reunion? No. Did you? Actually, uh, no. I wanted to, but I had this conference in England to attend. Oh, I love England. So do I. It was really quite fascinating. We were studying the fens along the coast, and it was such a... Now I remember. I saw that study in the paper, how rising sea levels have affected the migration patterns of seabirds. So, you're a geneticist now. Actually, a uh, behavioral ecologist, but I'm flattered that you read the article. Don't be. John read it. He's a bit of a science buff. Well, he used to work for Microsoft, but he's mostly just soft in the head. How nice for you. Yeah, <laughs> you're very happy. Yes, we have a son. This is David. Oh, good looking kid. I have a daughter. This is my Alice. She's beautiful. Surprise? Why, why would I be? <laughs> well, I would be if you had ever seen my husband. On the outside, he's not the most. Uh, but on the inside. I'm still trying to figure that part out. Sounds like the ideal marriage. Yes. Well, I better get home now. I'll put out some food. Oh, you have a dog. No, just for John. Um, but <laughs> maybe we can get together at some point. I'm sure Marla would love to see you for old time's sake. No, that's not what I meant. Uh, it's you and me. Sarah, I, uh, I don't know. Don't tell me you're not flattered by that, too. All right, fine. Uh, we can talk about our spouses then. A deal? Okay, hey. I suppose I can't prove anything. I live in Evans. I live right around here. We could meet uh, in Lincoln Square near the fountain. Okay. Sounds good, although I should probably tell Marla. That's up to you. Isn't that your daughter? Yeah. And, well, isn't that, isn't that your son? Yes. Oh. Yes, it is. That's just too fun. I don't think it is, and neither will Marla. Oh, so she still hates me now, too. No. I don't know. Maybe a little. But what are we going to do about that? Do? I'm not going to do anything. You have to talk to me. You can if you want. She doesn't, she doesn't even know me. Huh, then talk to your son. I don't care. Now? I don't think so. But Marla does say I should talk to him more. Then do what she says, like an obedient husband. But this, I, I had no idea. And you won't say anything to Alice. No, are you kidding? If I do and it falls apart, she'll only blame me. Anyway, I don't need the complications. Things with John and I are a bit unusual at the moment. So you don't care what your daughter does? Of course I do, but if she can have her secrets, I could have mine, like meeting you here. We could all uh, stand and put things behind us. Oh, the past is already far behind us, but you, 
you were the same old Carl, so thoughtful and reliable. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'd be surprised if you were. Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. I would, I would have done anything for you back then, before everything fell apart, that is. I know, but maybe you were only in love with being in love. Maybe. And things are different now with you and Marlo? You know, I, I think they are. Monogamy might not be natural for much of the animal kingdom. And it might not be natural for many people, but for me, that's, that's where I feel most at home. You're lucky, then. I suppose I am. Well, you'll have to let me know what happens when you talk to your son. Good to see you. It's good to see you, too. And this is the view from the other side of Montrose Harbor. I know, you. I live just a few blocks from here, though. Yeah, but I grew up in this city. What? You don't enjoy me being your tour guide? Oh, sure, it's great. I mean, the first stop of the night was a historical site, right? The bedroom on Ridge Avenue with a famous computer engineer, David Harrison, grew up. I got you home before your parents woke up, didn't I? Yeah. The new townhouse is a door in the garden that leads to my room in the basement. Really? That came from Andy. Oh, so you just plan on sneaking around and never telling your parents about it? We can tell them. Eventually. When? Exactly. Uh, how about when we were married, have three kids, and need a babysitter? Aside from the fact that I don't remember us getting engaged, I don't think we can wait quite that long. You're not ashamed of me, are you? No, no, of course not. It's just, you know, when you're a junior in high school and everybody wants to know when you're going to go to college, and then when you're in college, people want to know what you're going to, what you're going to do after you graduate. And when you get married, everybody wants to know when you're going to have kids. So my parents, I bet they, they'll, be, they'll say that we should both wait until we are finished with school completely before we make any kind of serious commitment to each other. My mom will ask a bunch of questions, and my dad will just worry how we're going to survive. Is it so bad? No, it's not. Can't we just keep what we have and enjoy it to ourselves for a little longer? before everyone else tries to wreck it or tries to convince us we're making a mistake? You don't have to let them make us feel unsure if we don't want to be. I mean, when my mom finds out about you, she's going to have a cop. Exactly my point. Why I tell her that? Because maybe I want her to have a cop. So you just want to use me to aggravate your parents? Maybe. Yeah. It's not very flattering to me, is it? I think you need a better reason to tell them. And I think you need a better reason not to. You know, there's the Prudential building. My dad says it used to be the tallest building downtown. Can't you shut up for a minute? Ugh, so you decided to come home. Sorry, sorry, I did. No, I just thought maybe you'd come by the here and find me. You know, if I had fallen asleep, I could have been burnt to a crisp by the sun. You had your hat. Anyway, the truth is, something came up and I forgot you were still there. Oh, great, that's even better. A couple of things happened, actually. And I think that... What? Remember that guy? That guy I was engaged to in college? I never met him, so how can I remember? What was his name? Carmen? Carl. Carl. But you knew it all along. No, I didn't. Why would I want to think about someone who hurt my little poochie so badly? Because, because I ran into him at the beach just a little while ago. No. Yes. No. Funny, huh? Yes, hilarious. So you just walked off in a huff from the pier and you just happened to... I didn't to... exactly walk off in a huff, but yes, there he was in that thicket. You know, the magic hedge. Well, I see. So you just happened to run into your old boyfriend in the magic hedge. We're all kinds of strange creatures up here. <laughs> Yeah. See if he lives in Evanston. He sometimes comes to study the sandbanks by the water. I might get together with him again sometime. So, uh, you don't mind? No! 
advice that I possibly mind if you plan to meet up with a man you were totally and completely infatuated with in college. <sighs> but you know, you know, I just can't get over it. It is a funny coincidence. What is? Nothing. <laughs> Tell me. Okay, but what would you say if I told you that I was once engaged to be married and... Uh, Were you? John? Well, yeah, but I haven't thought about her in years almost as if she never existed. And then someone happened to mention her name in the shop the other day. That's hard to believe. What? That someone could have wanted me? Beside you, you mean? Why did you break up? Oh, you know, with the usual reasons I was ready to settle down and she just wasn't ready. Guess I was kind of a true for my <laughs> Interesting. Well, maybe you had gone backwards by the time you met me. Are you going to get together with her then? Maybe. Should I? Yeah, why not? And if you do, I'd like to meet her too. Would you? Well, I'll see if we can arrange it. <laughs> Where does she live? I'm not sure. I think near here. Well, I would start with Facebook or maybe that person in the computer shop who knows her. Yes, maybe I will. What is her name? What? Her name! <laughs> but, but, Your ex fiance! Uh, wait, look, no, I'll, I'll just let that be a surprise, shall I? When you meet her sometime. <laughs> surprise? Sure. Maybe we can make it a double date. What? You and I, both with our former fiancés? No, 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 no. I don't think so. But you said there were a couple of things that happened. What was the other one besides running into Carlos? Carl! No, that's just it. Just that. I was actually quite surprised. Yes, I'm sure you were. <laughs> Marla. How were the dunes? Uh, they were okay. More peculiar than I expected. Listen, I hate to admit it, but you were right. Oh, I was right about something and that has you upset? No, I'm serious. It's, it's about David. He, he does have a girlfriend. Oh, thank God. He's won for a long time. You do not understand. Why is she, um, uh, underage? Probably not. Unattractive? Hardly. I know. I saw them by accident at the lake. Oh. Oh, just now? Oh. Oh, don't tell me. Is she a libertarian? How could I tell just by looking at her? And what difference would that make anyway? Well, I know it shouldn't, but I guess we have to draw the line somewhere. I mean, I know we said we just want David to be happy. <laughs> you don't understand. This, this girl, she's not right, but she just can't be. Oh, that's not one of your zebra finches. He gets to choose for himself. But it's your parents, okay? It's your parents that are the problem. Why? What's wrong with them? I'd rather not say. Well, they're not bank robbers or murderers or something. I don't know if her father is a murderer or not, but it's her mother, okay? Her mother, it's worse. It's... Really, I think you're being a bit paranoid. I'm not. It's, it's Sarah. Sarah, as in your childhood best friend, Sarah, your college roommate, Sarah, your husband's former fiance, Sarah, before you marry me, that is. David is dating Sarah's dog? Oh, Sarah lives in Seattle, last I heard. Not anymore. I saw her too, I believe. Sarah? You saw Sarah too? Yeah, but that's not the important part. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> if she is here and David is... Oh, oh he couldn't. He, he, he just can't. Uh-huh. Do you think David knew that, that you were once engaged to Sarah and, and sought out a daughter to... Uh, is, he, is he angry with us for to get back us or something? You just said it was up to David. But Sarah's daughter? Oh, do you think he met her on that school trip to Europe, and then and then and then he was visiting her between schools when we thought he was visiting his friend Alex? Yes, Inspector Prowro, I imagine so. No, what were they doing? It looked like they were holding hands. Oh, this is so bad. I guess 
You think? Well, were they kissing too? They might have been. I wasn't keeping track. No, no, not like you scientists do with your zebra finches. <laughs> you have to do something. Me? You always say I'm no good at communicating. Well, I'll get you a book I saw in the self-help section of Barnes and Noble. You could talk to me. Explain. No, I'd much rather you did it. Please, it's really embarrassing for my mother to explain to her son. And it's not embarrassing for me. <laughs> hey, I'll see what I can do. Let's go. To talk to him now. No, go the story into that book before he gets home. And on the way, you tell me just how you ran into Sarah. In the first place, what do you talk about exactly, Carl? It was just chance, mostly. <sighs> Don't you said the other day. 
really, John Darling. After 23 years, I mean, it did take him a while to get up the guts to marry me, but how long were the two of you in? Two, two years. months. Oh. <laughs> two years and two months. Mm -hmm. We were together for two months, and then we figured out pretty fast it wasn't going to work. So. <laughs> we just couldn't admit it to ourselves, could we? Let alone to each other, let alone to everyone else. <laughs> it was all completely a fake. We just sort of went along to get along, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, I really do. <laughs> but there were such wonderful times at the start. Yes, wonderful. We just couldn't get ourselves to admit. I guess we were blinded by love. Blinded, I see. So, uh, you stayed together even though you knew you were wrong for each other? Friends for two years and in two months got engaged and broke up? It happens probably more often than we realize, don't you think? Me? Oh, I don't think much of anything. Isn't that right, my darling? That's why you married me. He didn't want a woman with too many ideas because it might compete with her ability to dote on him completely. That's not true. Look, this isn't working out quite the way I planned. Oh, I think it's working wonderfully. Please, do go on. It's healthy to get things off your chest. You know, I think I'll go for a little swim. Oh, darling, you are the one who's not a good swimmer. Yes, I know, but if I keep my mouth shut, as we might be best for all of us to do, I won't swallow any water. And I might just let you do the backstroke over to the pier, lie down, take a little nap. Oh, are you getting tired? He is getting tired. The way he tends to do whenever I suggest we make love. <laughs> Oh, very common. Probably just the anxiety that he can't, you know. Yeah, that's another problem. But he promised me he would do something about it. About what? Your complete lack of common sense. He doesn't have a practical bone in his body. Yes, so I'm starting to see that. Darling, you were smart to break up with him when you did. I will go with her. Uh, I know, that's what you said, but I don't believe you because just. Look at her. Why? What's wrong with her? <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Just it. Nothing. She's. You're gorgeous. And if I wasn't married, I would do. <laughs> oh! Oh! I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, I. <laughs> I bet you didn't. You sighed definitely. You promised me that I was only trying to make a point. That. If you were to break up with a beautiful woman like this, who obviously has so much going for her, then you are an even bigger fool than I believe. <laughs> that is the nicest thing that anyone has ever said. What, did I have a fool? <laughs> no, but I have so much going for me. <laughs> you can really get appreciated in that way. Well, you obviously deserve it, and uh, I don't think either one of us deserves him. Should we? Should we get some lunch? I could get something to eat. Why don't you ask the fishermen over there? I bet they caught some salmon. It's in season. I know you like it fresh. But that wouldn't be very healthy. Anyway, they will be bagels or cream cheese. I think I should just come with you. Why don't you just stay here and draw a robot girlfriend and console you in your old age or talk to a seagull or take a nap? You said you were tired. Fine. You really don't want me. No. As a matter of fact, I really don't. Us girls can do just fine without you. What's that? supposed to mean. Bye, John. Goodbye, John. Enjoy the sunshine. And don't forget to put on some lotion so you don't get badly burned. Burned? Why should I get burned? Cloudy day. I have my hat. Don't worry about me. I have my hat.
inside. Oh, it did, but these magazines you brought with you are really interesting. Do you think a guy like that would go for a dude like this? Oh, maybe. I don't know if this is exactly right for you. What would Paul John like? John. All he cares is that I keep my hair long. <laughs> so when did you figure it out that I wasn't really his oh. ex-fiance? He had me for a few minutes. Did I? Yes, but then John isn't very good at keeping secrets, and then he mentioned you. I mean, the you who would have been you had you been his ex-fiance. I thought, gosh, for someone to have, for him to have kept it a secret for all these years, someone must have really humiliated him, cut him down to the core of his shaky being. And I was kind of looking forward to it. I mean, someone like that must be really interesting. Oh, do you hate the guy so much? Wow. <laughs> You make me feel sorry for him. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> and now he thinks we're kind of dating. Oh, it's a bit cruel, isn't it? Don't worry. We'll tell him the truth in a few days. In the meantime, it might be good for him. He, he hired you. Didn't he? He must think I'm really dumb. Or maybe he's just really desperate to get your attention. Like a child throwing a tantrum. Alice used to do that, and John would give her whatever she wanted. I was always cast as the bad guy, and that's still the way it is. He always cared more about her dreams and what I might want tomorrow. Isn't that what a parent's supposed to do? Maybe, yeah, but a person can't exist without hopes, right? Right? That we have some kind of future? That once I'm done raising my child, I don't have to roll up into a little ball and die? I think I can see what you mean. I just... I just want to do something special while I'm still alive. Special? Like travel to far and exotic places? Oh, we haven't traveled in so long. That's not exactly what I'm talking about. I need something amazing! <laughs> something that would have made my parents proud of me if they had been paying attention. <laughs> something that means something to other people, that will make a difference in their lives. I don't think other people really care. Oh, I think they do, though, when it's something that really matters. I mean, you wouldn't believe that many people tell me when I'm working on their heads. <laughs> As if I was a bartender or, or a psychologist. <laughs> but it's probably because to most of them, I am nobody. Anonymous. like. An isolated canyon where they can just shout their fears and hear back only their own echoes. I mean, Facebook is kind of like the opposite. We respond to the fact that we have no privacy by saying if we can't beat them, we might as well join them. <laughs> Though, most people are probably just reaching out to remind themselves that there are others out there still like them, sitting alone in their own living rooms or Anonymous themselves, their cubicles at work. <laughs> to be able to confide in one person alone who will keep your secret to the grave, that is something special. That is something really rare. I used to think that was what a husband was for someone who would respect you and who you could trust no matter what. Maybe that is so nice. Yeah. Or like a best friend. I used to have one I thought was like that, but I was wrong. You know, you're a good listener yourself. Am I? That's not what John says. Sometimes he makes me think like I'm not listening at all. Oh, there it is now. Hurry. Hurry. Stupid machine. Second time it's short enough. Just let it was on to something. Hello, Sarah! You haven't seen my new Astro Boy book, have you? Ah. Ouch! Served you right! Ah. Ah. Huh? Oh, hey, John. Back so soon? Sarah, who's that? Hi, John! <laughs> nice to see you again. Me? What are you doing here? What does it look like we are doing? Playing hide and seek. Have you both been drinking? Well, Tammy is going to stay with us for a little while. Well, 
stay here? We have that bedroom on the second floor, so I thought. <laughs> you know she's not actually my former fiance. Oh, she knows, John. She knows. <laughs> you don't want her. I thought I would claim her for myself. She was never mine in the first place. And therefore, you have no rights over her whatsoever. Not in the teensiest, weensiest little bit. Exactly. I mean, I've had things stolen from underneath me before. From underneath you? From right under my nose. Under your nose? Ah, it's just an expression. But if the shoe fits. I'd a hobby to occupy my time. A hobby? A hobby? This is not precisely what I had in mind. Taking a stray person who we hardly know, playing hide and seek, half naked, half drunk, in the middle of the living room, in the middle of the afternoon, in the middle of the sofa bed. Oh, Tammy's only going to stay with us for a little while. Isn't that right, Tammy? Fanny. Yes, it is, Sarah, darling. I mean, I don't want to impose too much. Wait, wait, you have pet names for each other? Oh, her landlord was going to raise her rent, and you were going to take her home from the beach just the other day. I know how kind-hearted you are. And frankly, she has nowhere else to go. You wouldn't want me to put her out on the street, would you? This is my house! Half of it is mine. Probably more than half now that I'm earning more than you. But, uh, if you want to share Tammy with me. Oh, yes! Do you, John? Join us, please. Although, I'm not sure you were quite up to it. I mean, lately, even one full life has been too much for you.
Well, you weren't dating Alice before, and then of course back then your mom wasn't your mom yet either. What is this really all about that? I'm going to be late. Yeah, for a uh, job interview. David. Alice's mom was my fiance. Huh? Before I married your mom, but it is. Come on. You're trying to tell me that you were once engaged to Alice's mom? That's right. No. No, that's so wrong. To think I would believe that. What is this? Some kind of a scheme to make me forget about Alice? No, it's, it's not. <laughs> but you do want me to forget of me. You do want me to forget about her. Well, maybe just not date her as a girlfriend. As a friend, that'd be fine. I still don't see what any, what any of this has to do with me. Even if you did almost marry her mom. You didn't. You married my mom. I mean, I know that she's not always happy with you, but... Did, did you say something? No, Dad, I'm just not stupid, that's all. And I'm sure whatever happened in the past must have something to do with it, right? It's a long story. Her mom still had a boyfriend back then, too, even though we were really close. And, and I know you don't have time for this whole ridiculous saga. It's, it's just it's been uncomfortable for me. It's, it's almost it's like incestuous. No. No, you're oh, no, 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 hey, 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 Alice is not your sister, no. <laughs> oh, you sure are something, Dad. You know, all this talk about telling the truth, you'll try anything to break this up, won't you? You don't understand. No, I don't. I don't think I want to either. You know, this is the first time in my life when I actually feel appreciated for who I am. I tried to tell Alice, I tried. This is exactly what I was worried. David! No, just leave me alone. so good together, would you have decided you were wrong? Probably not, but we could do it again, so I'm more data to consider. I don't think that's such a good idea. For us to do it again? You don't like it then? No, oh, I do. Maybe too much. So you don't feel about me the way I feel about you, is that it? No. Oh. I don't know. I know how I feel about you right now, but... What? What is it then? Tell me. It's about your mom. I think maybe she wasn't such a nice person. Hey, David, don't say anything about my mom, okay? Okay? I, I mean, I can criticize her, but you don't. Okay. I don't think she hurt my dad. Because they don't even know each other. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, why would they? I didn't even grow up in Chicago. Yeah, but our parents did, and my dad just got done telling me that your mom and my mom and my dad all went to the same college together. To them? Yeah, and they were really close for a while too at school. But then why didn't we know? Because my dad was supposed to marry your mom, but he married my mom instead. I think maybe, look, your mom was my dad's first love, his true love, the one that he was supposed to marry. You're kidding, right? Show us. But I still don't understand. What happened? It's the thing. We have to find out the truth or else the past may come back to bite us. It's only a great tragedy, David. Does any of this have to do with us? Yeah. That's the question I asked first, too. But look, our parents all made a terrible mistake. Or maybe it was your mom's mistake. I'm sorry. It's just it's all too weird, you know? By rights, I should be your brother. <laughs> but you're not. It didn't happen. We are who we are. But I feel like I'm 
to train something. Yeah, the way you talk, you are. For my mom, it must have been the most devastating thing that happened to her in her life to that point. What was the most devastating thing after that? I'm not sure. I'm guessing when she married her dad. That's not funny. Who said I'm making a joke? But weren't your mom and dad ever happy? I don't know. Maybe before I was born? You know how few people actually find this? What we have? And you just want to throw it all away? What did I do wrong? Nothing. I told you, nothing. I just need some time to figure this out. I think you just don't want me anymore. No, no, I would tell you if that was the case. I'm so sure you would. Then you don't trust me anymore. What does it matter anyway what the truth is? The truth is I want to be with you no matter what. Then you can wait a while, right? once in Lincoln Square when we were home from school? Yeah, I think so. On spring break. Cookie? Oh, no thanks. I always liked this spot. The fountain and the kids. Yeah, those days were fun. I remember you flirting with a guy who worked in the bookstore. I don't remember that. I do. I didn't think you would show up today. What? You didn't the last time? The last time. The last time you had just stolen my fiance. Did you think I would come and congratulate you? Maybe we should have met somewhere more private. I just thought this might be neutral ground, like that playground you went in grammar school. Oh, they think that over when they built an addition to the school. Did they? Well, we're not kids anymore. I just wanted somewhere where it would be harder to hurt each other. It's more than just about us now. It was never just about us. You know what I mean. Seems Alice really cares for David. The way you really cared about Carl? Marla. Alice is a great kid. She's she's more reliable than I was at that age. She better be. So why? Why did you do it? Does it really matter after all this time? Yes, now more than ever. Back then, I didn't even know you were in love with Carl. Well, you should have known you were my best friend. You should have told me. I told you everything. That's how you even knew about it. You know, and then you had to go blab to Carl all about it. I didn't. It was that girl who hated you from that English class. Yeah, but when you asked Carl, you didn't deny it. You could have lied to him for me. I tried. You didn't believe me. And I don't believe you. You married him. I was in love with him. And I was engaged to him first. Yes, but I wasn't the one having an affair before I got married just to get out of my system. I was angry with you, Sarah. I loved you. It, it felt like you cheated on both of us. Now that sounds kind of strange. You know what I mean. Do I? You know. I didn't tell you about how I felt about Carl because I didn't want to ruin what you had. You seemed so happy. I mean, after that first week with him, you were ecstatic. I was, wasn't I? And then when I found out you hadn't broken up with that old boyfriend, I couldn't believe it at first. You had promised me you were going to. Did I? I don't remember that. Okay, I remember. But you could have tried harder instead of grabbing Carl on the rebound like that. I mean, you were always all elbows in basketball, but I never expected it. You know, it was you with the elbows. Do you remember that really tall girl, Mary, in fifth grade? Was that her name? Oh, you gave her quite a shine. <laughs> she went home crying and her mother called her mom. Oh, that was an accident. I didn't mean to hurt her. And I didn't mean to hurt you. Why? talk to each other in the last 20 years. Do you think it would have mattered? Maybe? I remember us talking about being each other's bridesmaid one day. I, I had a cousin. I had John's aunt Mabel. She had silver hair. Was she like really modern? No, she was really old. <laughs> I miss my best friend all these years. So have I. We 
They're always supposed to be there for each other. But people change. Some do. We've changed. Maybe you have. I don't know about me. So what are we going to do about our kids? Can you imagine us having to plan their wedding together? <laughs> Not in a million years. We can still do something about it. You know, that thought crossed my mind too, but I don't think this one's going to be up to us. You could spread a rumor that your my Alice is cheating on your David. Yeah, that's not fun. Why should they be happy when we never got to be? You mean not happy? Are you? Mostly, yes. Well, you should be. Carl wouldn't even agree to meet with me unless you were there too. He wouldn't. Didn't you know that? Sure, of course I did. Um, but did your husband ever try to cheat on me? He wouldn't have the guts, the fool. Very much happy. Maybe I'll tell you someday. After all, we're not very good friends anymore, are we? No, I, I suppose we're not. Didn't you always used to tell me that I just needed to get out of my own way? Maybe it's time you took your own advice. Maybe, yeah. Thanks. Cookie? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although, if this thing with David and Alice works out, it could be kind of cool. We could end, we could end up related as mother-in-laws. Do you think we could be friends again? Not if you don't buy better cookies, give me a minute. <laughs> anyway, you know, it wasn't on the down. It seems Carl really loves me. I know. That's what hurts the most. Astro boy, Astro boy, he is brave and gentle and wise. Daddy? Hmm? Oh, I see. Where's Mom? I'm not sure exactly. She said something about showing a house in the suburbs. She seemed kind of nervous. Must be a big deal or something. What are you drawing? Oh, just a robot with a built-in metal detector. Wouldn't that take away all the fun? Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. But it might be nice to have a nap on the beach and have the robot detector do the work for me. Maybe you lift loose chain from people's pockets along the way. It uses personal magnetism. A robot? Bandits. Yeah, two armed one, not like the casinos. See? Cute, Dad. Is that because your mom running away? Oh, well, no, well, that's just a coincidence. Though <laughs> well, I'll let you without a little secret. I haven't used the detector because your mother hates it. Daddy! That's what marriage is all about. Maybe you're annoying the one you love the most so you don't annoy anyone else. It's a sign of an even key. Not exactly a romantic vision. No, I suppose not, but then, hmm, thinking it over. I wonder if that robot could have a built-in rock tumbler washer for artifacts that, yes, a scanner linked to a computer to help identify them. Dad, did you ever freak out when a girl wanted to get closer to you? What do you mean closer? You mean like better friends? Yeah, sure, that's what I mean. I was just wondering, was it easy for girls to talk to you? I don't know if you'd have to ask them. It was terrifying being in grammar school. Got easier in high school then? For me, no, not exactly. In college? Not quite then either. I met mom. No, but I was almost there. Alice, what is this about? Do you like someone? No, just doing research for a friend. She just had to her incredibly thick headed boyfriend will answer any of her text messages and almost a week. Why didn't she just call him? Daddy, really? Oh, sorry. Because I still live in the Stone Age when people used to pick up phone to talk to each other, but then, then this is the 21st century. Maybe I could design a delivery robot who could take a message to your friend's boyfriend for her. Can't you answer a serious question? You know, for a moment there, you sounded just like your mother. Because I am just like her. I always have her. God help us. I always hope a little bit of you would be the me. Please. Did a girl ever care for you so much that she scared you away? Yeah, sure. Your mother. Then I felt sorry for her and I came back. And now, since she may have spent too much time with me, if I stay away as much as possible, she might be much happier. I won't lose her completely. I mean, you know, on the beach one day, when she wanders off into the magic hedge and disappears forever. I thought you said you'd be serious. <laughs>
to know. Why only a Greek answer a serious question? There's a difference. Did they teach you anything for that education degree of yours? Yeah, maybe child psych is what I'm using. Yeah. Not sure how that's going to end. But why don't you have to solve a difficult software problem? The simple solution was always best. No point making something complicated, more complicated. So why don't you best for you to not to push too hard? We always need room to work things out, work kind of slow, and we sometimes <laughs> do the opposite of what's best for us. Yeah, I know. On the other hand, all things being equal, weeks being carefully placed on the balance, don't quote me on this. If there's something a person really wants, that person shouldn't be doing that thing and slipping their fingers. I remember a time once when Astro I met this cute girl robot he really liked. She had the nicest little power pack, and he, that ass boy, he had a lot of heart. More than other robots who just do the same thing over and over again. Deep down, he really cared. But Dad, what should I do? I mean, what should my friend do? Hold back or really go for it? I suppose she should do whatever makes her feel best in the end. But, like a software problem, if her first approach doesn't work, then she may need to have to try another. Have a plan A, have a plan B. That almost makes sense. Almost? I need to think about it. For yourself or your friend? For my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. For what? You know, I wonder if that robot could make sandwiches too. Cut off the crust sandwich. What does that have to do with finding fossils or rare coins? Nothing. It's so good to have handy, nice and strong out line. That should pull me out. <laughs> Maybe we aren't right for each other after all. 
I mean, at first my dad was sure that your mom was the right one, but now he seems pretty happy with my mom. So, well, maybe in spite of themselves or because of something wiser deep inside them, they did what was best. Your mom sabotaged what she might have had with my dad because deep down she knew that he belonged with my mom instead. Or maybe she was suffering from buyer's remorse and she lost what she needed most. She said sometimes, sometimes people see what they're sure is their dream house, the perfect place to raise their family, live happily ever after. And then after they sign the papers, they think, oh my god, what if this isn't right after all? And all they can see are the flaws. The living room is too small, and the basement ceiling is too low, and how are they ever going to afford the new fence they need for the backyard? And then they start to wonder why they could be to find the house in the first place. Alice, I don't think of you as a house. More of your backyard as being too small or too large for that matter. <laughs> hey. What I'm trying to say is, maybe we just need to trust our choices because maybe, maybe we were fated to meet to fix what's been correct before. Like, like maybe the genes in our families were bound to be fixed one way or another, and, and it's just going to happen a generation later. That's all. Alice, my dad might find that an interesting argument, but I think it's a little crazy. Maybe not. We get married someday, and our kids are even more together than we are. Yeah, but what if they're even less together than us? Are we just going to lecture them like we've been getting lectured? Yes. Damn yeah, right. I think that's exactly what we'll do. But you don't want to miss out on the possibility of that, do you? No, I guess I don't, but... Good then. Alice. David. I suppose if you turn out to be a major pain, I can always... Yeah. Good. Great. God, I think software design must be easy. At least now I don't have to try to find a Huh? But I think at this point there's always one last question. What's that? Do you want a tenure mortgage with a low interest rate? Or even a longer mortgage with a lower rate? Well, the longer one, for sure. After all, this is the deal I'm going to be paying for for the rest of my life. Oh, okay, fine. What did you get for dating me? Goodbye, then. Unless you think you can get a better rate with that girl from the last time? Oh, I think this rate is just fine. <laughs> Oh, so Alice gets her artistic talent from you, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mostly draw 
drugs robots. Big robots. Little robots. Green ones. <coughs> yellow ones. All shapes. All kinds. In the night. In the attic. Where he keeps his Isaac Asimov the popular mechanics. Really? I'd love to see it. You mean you haven't been there already? No, Daddy. I told you, David. I've never been to our town. But why robots? Because when the human race completely contaminates itself with radiation, it will be quite nice to have some around and they'll make a proper cup of tea. Ah. I don't think that's very funny. It just stands to reason that with a computer brain, robots will be able to think faster and more accurately than we do. And in some cases, maybe more human than us in the long run. <laughs> what, to, to write poetry or create fine works of art? You know, doctors or teachers? What? And replace all of us with unfeeling machines? No, not to replace you, Mom, but to maybe provide additional care for those with disabilities, or to help surgeons make medical procedures more precise. Or for sex, then. It might make task sharing easier in some households. Mom! I don't think I want to have sex with a robot. Very glad to hear it. Poor Astro Boy. <laughs> no matter how much he wants to be loved, he'll always be seen as just a machine. Uh, because the mind is more than just a mechanical thought processor. You only have to watch robins nurture their young to know that there's a mystery to the big things. But the robots would be safer than rearranging our biological makeup. Would you use genetic engineering to make sure your children were really smart? I mean, smarter than you. I don't think we're going to have any more children. Uh, no, we're not. <laughs> well, anyway, genes are not just organic Lego. You can't fit them together to make whatever you want. You might end up with a child who's very smart, but who has other problems as well. Exactly! But we have two beautiful, healthy children here, and we should be happy for that. Boss, why if you could insert a gene that would make them do the dishes when they're not tight? Or a gene that allows men to cook for themselves while their wives go out for the evening. That would be slightly more feasible because the sense of... How about a gene that would enable a woman to have more respect for her husband? Or a gene that allows them to think of new and clever ways to get rid of their husband when they are done with them. <coughs> All women are already born with that potential. It's a survival instinct. Speaking of which, why don't you take your metal detector out next time that new girlfriend of yours goes flying a kite in a thunderstorm again? Girlfriend? The one who's been living with us? I thought she was your girlfriend. Your old girlfriend, depending on what you want to believe. Daddy, I thought you said she just needed a place to stay. Oh, your mother's just joking here. She's the one with the most imagination in this family. Yeah, sometimes I think I dreamed your father up in a post-alcoholic nightmare. Are you real? In case you decide to invent another former fiancé? That's not fair, is it, given the present circumstances? All fair, dear. Love and war. Oh, love and war? Sounds like I arrived just in time. Better late than never, I always said. At least when it came to my <laughs> Coffee cake, anyone? Oh, you didn't have to do that. Hey, everybody. Everyone, this is Tammy, the woman we were just talking about. Tammy? Hi. You know her? Yeah, this is the lady who cut my hair, right, Mom? Yes, uh, she cut mine, too. Did a very nice job. I know you enjoyed it more tea. No, I hate this smile. Yes, I'm sure it did. How about you, John? No, thank you, Mavis. Marla. Oh, sorry, Marla. <laughs> Donnie here isn't very good with names. Donnie? No, until you get to know him better, it's hard to tell who he really is. But I guess most people are like that. Now, David, you're not going to break up with our Alice, are you? She'll never forgive her mother here. I, uh, Tammy, why are you living here exactly? I thought well, you had your own place. She's uh, going to stay with us for a little while. After all, she is Alice's dad's former fiance. Is what? Are you really? I don't get it. I don't either. Dad was going to forget she's coming off and you never knew. Okay, no, David, no. But Mom, I mean, you, you never told us you were engaged to David's father either. I mean, am I really your daughter? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> this is just some silliness invented by your father. Yeah, but what about when you were once engaged to my dad at college? Did your husband, did John here, invent that too? No, you both don't understand. Who is she? Oh, God, don't tell me. David, are you my dad's mistress? <laughs> Oh, you gonna divorce him? Oh, well, I didn't think about it for a while, but sweetie, listen, don't call me that. You never cut my hair, you're not gonna mess with my head. God, Dad, I forbid it for you to be engaged to someone like her, like me. I didn't, okay? I never was. Sorry, Alice, 
sincere. I'm not really your father's former fiance. And I'm certainly not his mistress. <laughs> I mean, don't make me laugh. He's a nice guy and all that, but him and me, I'm not. Well, I'm talking about my daddy's name's not good enough for you. But now your mother here. Well, then, then that way I would just be but your father here didn't think that was I did not! You did too. Mom, um, will you pass the sugar, please? Uh, uh, Mom, give us for some more sugar. Thanks, Mom. It's always nice to have something sweet. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet. I don't believe it. You children are so prudish. I wouldn't really call us that exactly, just because we prefer to know who our parents really are and who is sleeping with whom in the family. Don't be ridiculous, David. Uh, we both know you two are sleeping together, don't we? Yes, we do. We do. I, 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 I didn't know. <laughs> Daddy, uh, I've been away at school for four years. I don't like it. Why would you get then when I didn't have to know about it? Why wait till you came home? Yeah, why not do it at school and then never again for the rest of your life? I think until you get out of your system, I think that's what your father is saying. Not exactly, no, but I guess that could be okay with me. How about you, Emily, sweetie? I think I should go make some more tea. I know, dear. Uh, we have enough. Thank yes. you. No need to leave the room just when the conversation is getting interesting. I get, I'm glad we get to provide the entertainment, but I'm sure David is not exactly a passive participant in all of this. No, Mom, you'd be glad to know David is far from passive. <laughs> Thank you. Alice, we have positive feedback. It's so hard when you're raising a child to know if you've done a good job. Oh, he did just fine. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martin, I can go make some more tea if you like. Thank you, David. No, no, you think we want the two of you alone in that kitchen? Daddy, really? <laughs> Carl, you've been off. Quiet. Did you have anything to say? I don't think my train qualified me to do anything. That's not what you said earlier. Well, I can understand that. I mean, this is not exactly like a college lecture hall or a zebra pitch aviary. But I just think that if you see something that you think is right, you can't let anything get in the way, or you might just regret it forever. Isn't that true? Tammy, just let me handle this. At least we have a real life husband of your own. And let me tell you, the real ones are a lot more complicated than. That is being simple, I guess. I suppose so. Alice, sweetie, listen, we really, really don't have to do this. I mean, just because you and David. Oh. Oh, you're not pregnant. Oh my god! Are you? No! I'm sorry, Mom, I'm not. Well, <laughs> oh, great, great. Well, then I am sure your parents will not insist that David here changed his whole course of his life because the two of you. Thank you for coming here today so that we can all talk. But uh, whatever Alice and I decide to do with our lives, it's not really up to our parents. Look at the mess they've made of their own lives. David? You think you're going to be rude to them in front of us? I don't intend to just be rude to them, Dad. <laughs> Why do you want to sabotage my chance for happiness? I love Alice with all of my heart, more than I'm ever going to love anyone. Sorry to you too, Mom. She's the one for me. Oh, David. Wonderful. You know, it's about time you told them how you really feel. You mean you told Tammy before you told us? <laughs> David, I know your father has said some things to you. Yeah, Mom, yes. What have I said that was so terrible? Only that it was too weird for me to date Alice. <laughs> Look at the source. This is all weird. You, you are all weird. So please, please just let Alice and I live our lives in our own weird way, okay? And if it's just too peculiar for you that we've met, given all the history between you three, well, then that's, that's just too gosh darn bad. And, and if and when Alice and I decide to get married and have kids, I'm making it plain and clear now so that, there's no, there's, so that there's no discussion or debate in the future, we get to mess them up in our own strange and bizarre way. <laughs> right, Alice? Yes, David. Absolutely right. I'm so proud of you. Yes! We all should be proud, you know, because I just realized that the most special thing I can do in my life is to have children like you, David, and like you, Alice, and help them to become strong people, capable of love and being loved, not just because of what we do for them, but because of how we live our own lives. Thank you very much.
um, Alice and I don't intend on getting married. You so, don't? No, at least not for a while. Uh, we're going to live together first. You are? No one told me that either. Did all of you know that too? No. no. Yes. As soon as I can find a decent job and a place that we can afford, and there's nothing that you can do or say to make us change our minds. We're not trying to break you up. Are we? Marla? Marla? Are you old best friend? What? No, I, I don't want you to break up necessarily. Car Carl? Well, you do have to consider the ramifications if you take a step like this, but on the other hand, on the other hand, weight's being carefully placed on the balance. What? Oh, yes. Most birds, when they need to build a nest, they fly farther and farther away to find the things they need before they bring them home again. And I guess the point is, they do them home again, at least once in a while, to do the laundry. <laughs> what your father's trying to say, David, is that if you're only bit more confident in his feelings about me, he wouldn't have such a hard time with his own son falling in love. I don't think that's exactly what I was trying to say, Carl. Okay, go for it, David. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> no, neither of us do. Uh, Alice, you just got home from school. I'm not ready to see you go yet. Why don't you two take the room in our basement? It used to be a mother-in-law's apartment, but why not for a Possible future son-in-law. Really? You, you would let us do that? Why not? John? Yes, of course. Why not live in our basement? Tell me you're already at the second floor guest room, so by all means, David, move in. As long as you like, at last I'll finally have someone to talk to about Astro War. John means that would make him very happy. Ecstatic! See? I'm all ready to dance a jig with my Old new friend here! Yeah, not a you though. Know. Go build yourself another robot. And who are you calling old? Um, well, that's a very kind offer, but it's not exactly what we had in mind, is it, Alice? Oh, I, I don't know. It saved us a lot of money. Yes, darling, but I thought the idea was for us to be on our own. Yes, sweetheart. But neither one of us has a job. It might make things easier until we do. Uh, Alice, uh, can we talk about this somewhere else? Please? Just. You and me, alone? What if I don't want to talk to you right now, geekhead? Submarine lover? Fine! Let's go! Great, let's go! Well, that certainly went well. Yes, I think it did. Yes! Splendidly, your suggestion that they move in here should have been arguing for quite some time. Sarah, did you do that? Not saying I did, and I. Not saying I did more tea. <laughs> they bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. And you, you were brilliant. Yes, and so were you. And we're actually going to move into my basement. You know, we're sneaking around. You know, I'm glad that you were finally able to tell the truth. <laughs> I can move in tomorrow if you like. Uh, in a couple of days. Turn on, and it always will be, whether or not you're still ovulating. You promise. 
you might believe me, like those women on the internet whose husbands dump them when they get they look too old and then they go and get makeovers and snag much younger men and their husbands get all jealous. Please don't. <laughs> At a makeover or snagging younger man? Both, okay? Both. Okay. Just check. Sure. Touch base with me and say another ten years. No, by then I'll be all shriveled up and you won't want to have anything to do with me. Oh, I don't think so. How about touching base with me tomorrow morning then? <laughs> Are you kidding? That's terrible at the first thing in the morning. Well, how about now? You are more beautiful now than the day I met you, and you get love of your every day. And you are either extremely nearsighted or you are much better liar than when we first met. So, see, just because our eyes go, they, who says we can't get better at something else? <laughs> but they can't teach an old dog a new trick. That too. Maybe. Maybe you are an evolutionary advance. I highly doubt it. I just adjust better to some changes in the environment, but I appreciate the sentiment all the same. So we did an okay job as parents then? Yes, somehow I think we did. <laughs> What are you looking at? I'm not exactly sure. I've never seen anyone do to Tai Chi or yoga quite like that. That man must be double jointed. It's all tied up in knots. Is it cute? Maybe he needs help on tying the knots. Here, let me see. Mm -hmm. Ah! Oh, nice abs. Yeah? Oh, and shoulders too. Let me see. <laughs> Just remember, I saw him first. Oh, you don't have to worry. I am a happily married woman. Oh, I knew it was coming. A life sentence. For your sins. Where are you going? Oh, well, I just figure if he can teach Tai Chi, maybe he can teach me how to fly a kite. <laughs> Don't worry about me, I'll find my own way home later. With the instincts of a zebra finch. <laughs> Oh, don't 
out. You know what I mean. I was waiting for someone like you. Someone I could count on. Someone who would put up with me no matter what and still love me. And then there you were. Should we should we get some exercise? We can go for a walk. Uh, just not the same direction Tammy went. No, that's not what I meant. Here in the car. from his room in Evanston, Illinois. Hey, it's Carl! Hey, it's my dad. Oh, Finch. So tell us, Dr. Harrison, do studies like these of the mating habits of birds really advance our knowledge in an essential way? I think anything we can learn is potentially valuable. But is it true that the attrition rate among the baby birds was higher when the parents were forcibly separated and remarried, as it were? And that the male birds then also more frequently broke their vows by seeking some fun in the sun in another guy's nest? Oh, come now, is that really surprising? Yes, that is what I'm asking. Wasn't that result to be expected? Actually, no. As scientists, we try to damp down our expectations to ensure that our results are objective. It might be fair to say that we also learned that choice also plays out at a different level than the genetic, and that the female birds maybe have some wisdom that would do us all good to understand. Hear that, all you zebra finches out there? Follow your hearts first, and listen to your wives. In the long run, you may just be better parents and husbands. Thank you. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today.